gained in Christ than to be lost in any religion. There is so much more to gain in Christ Jesus than to be lost in any religion. So, in the next few minutes, I'll kick start. All I have said is preamble. All right? Laying the foundation. Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1. We start from there. And we're going to be reading every scripture together. Amen. Amen. Don't worry, I won't take much of your time. Because I've laid the foundation today. Amen. Next Sunday, I'll just be building it. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1. God is good. Oh, and all the time. God. Let's start reading together. We're going to read from verse 1 to the end, the whole 14 verses. Then we'll pick it up from there. Amen. Are we ready to go? Amen. One, two, three. Let's start reading. Go. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets has in these last days spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things through whom also he made the worlds who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For to which of the angels did he ever say, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And again, I will be honored I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. But when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all the angels of God worship. And of the angels, he says, Who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire? But to the son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with the oil of gladness more than your companions. And you, Lord, in the beginning laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They will perish. But you remain, and they will all grow old like a garment, like a cloak. You will fold them up, and they will be changed. But you are the same, and your years will not fail. But to which of the angels has he ever said, Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits? Sent forth to minister to those who will inherit salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's beauty in reading the word of God. I didn't know about you. As we were reading it, it's like it was, I was feeling filled up. Like the food filling me up. Amen. And I love one of the songs we sang today. Fill me up till I overflow. I want to run I want to run over, fill me up, till I overflow. I want to run over, I want to run over, tell me. Amen. Amen. God who at son, sundry times, as the scripture says, uh, this is at various times and in various ways spoke in the time past to the fathers by the prophets. Are you with me? Note that word. He spoke in the past by the prophets. That means he set up the prophets in the past to speak to the people. But in these last days, he spoke.
spoke to us by himself. By himself. If any prophet in this last days, if any apostle in this last days, if any evangelist, any teacher, any pastor in this last days wants to speak, God speaks through his son. So the prophet, the apostle, the pastor, the, the teacher, the evangelist must speak what the son he is speaking. If not, such a person is not delivering the mind of his son. In other words, if in this last days God decided to speak to us by his sons, whom he has appointed, heir of all things, you know, then every fivefold ministry of ministers should go find out what is in the heartbeat of the son. What is the heartbeat of the son is saying? Amen. 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 If peradventure I want to convey any message to my children, and I don't want to say it, my wife is right there by my side. I said, honey, could you please help me tell these children this, 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 and this? And she will help me to deliver the message. Yes, she has delivered the message, but not her message. Is a message that I am sending to the kids. And they will, on that note, because they had it from mommy, they will get up and do the same. Isn't it? In other words, even though I am not there physically delivering the message, the message has gone to them. In the same way, Jesus, in the same way, pardon me, God spoke in the past through the prophets but now speaking through his son. That means every message must be around his son. Must be around Jesus. Every presentation must be around Jesus. Must be of Jesus, about Jesus, around Jesus, with Jesus, in Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Because that's where God sees us. When he looks at you from heaven, he looks at you in Christ Jesus. Because if he has to look at us in ourselves, mm. oh please, we know we know what we have. We, we are not worthy of anything. Mm. We don't have what it takes. No human, no matter how righteous we think we are. Mm -mm, the, our righteousness is like filthy right by the way. So he decided to see anyone he wants to look at in Christ Jesus. And eventually he looks down from heaven on a certain day, he didn't find you in Christ Jesus. Know that you are in trouble, brother. So if, I love that scripture, when Jesus was speaking, you know, the Bible was saying, our life is hid with Christ in God. So if my life is not hid with Christ in God, then I'm doomed forever. Forget it, I may have promotion at work, I may be doing pretty well in the place of work. I may be earning good money, you know, good salary. But that person is doomed. You might even be like the guy whose who's worth is like $200 billion. If you are not found in Christ, you are doomed. All those ratings are human rating. Think about it. Human beings will raise a standard and everybody begins to run after it. And they forget the standard God raised. I'm not against the guy who made 200 billion. <laughs> it's good to make his money. Amen. Yeah. But we just have to put things in balance and check. Because that's what's trending these days. Verse 3 says, Who been the brightness? Now this is the description of Jesus Christ. You need to understand. Mm -hmm. Who being the brightness of his glory, talking about the glory of God, and the express image of his person. And upholding all things by the word of his power. When he heard by himself, purged our sins. Hallelujah. Look, Jesus is the exact replica of God. That's why we can say Jesus is God. Amen. Amen. And another scripture told us that he did not count it robbery 
to be equal with God. You know, but he humbled himself. So Jesus is the express image. He was talking about picture. Are you with me? He's like, if the photographer, if the paparazzi is around, and they took my picture, and they put it on, like, like take my own picture, I put it on, on Facebook, or on, on any other uh, social media stuff, what you see there is me. Even though I wasn't there in your room when you were checking your Facebook. But it is me. In the same way, God is on his throne in heaven, ruling in the affairs of men, but he sent his picture down again. He sent his picture. Jesus Christ. That's his picture. And his picture began to speak like he would speak. That's why Jesus said, I said nothing except as I hear from my father. I judge nothing but as I hear my father. So the, speak, the picture will only speak the exact image that is right there behind the scene that you are not seeing. But this is him in the flesh. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. You know, it reminds me of when Moses was really contemplating, fighting in the spirit, you know, pushing out, you know, troubling God. I want to see you. Come on, show your, show your face to me. Let me see you. And God was like, hey, do you understand what you're asking for? No one can see me and leave, and I don't want you to die yet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because he was pressing too much, God said, okay, 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 cool down. Come, come on, calm down, boy, calm down. I will pass by. Because you requested so much. And because I have something to do with these people. I will pass by. I will hide you on my side. You know, cover you. So that I will let you see my back. So when you see that, at least you can still live with that. You won't die. <laughs> but in the time that he now released his son, he released himself. So we could see God as this leave. Okay. So I can see God and still leave. That means the more of God I see in this flesh, the more of him I'm transformed into. And the more of him I can live on, this, on the earth. That's why the sons, which we are, mm -hmm. can exist here on earth and pull down every stronghold to the obedience of Christ. Mm -hmm. And destroy the works of darkness mm -hmm. and make sure they obey the sign of the Spirit mm -hmm. as we decree God's word through our mouth. Because we are seeing God mm -hmm. in Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and we are being transformed into his image and his presence is in us. So when I see you, I see Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. So in that context, if I know Jesus and understand Christ, then I will realize that if I see any brother or any sister who is in Christ Jesus, then I know that this is a miracle of God standing before me. Verse 4 says, Having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance, obtained a more excellent name than they. And verse 5 says, For to which of the angels did he say, You are my son, today I have begotten you? <laughs> Years ago, I was teaching, and I mentioned this, and it's a general belief, by the way, because something you will agree with by the time I'm I'm done saying it. Which other spiritual leader that ever existed and still existing can say or did say, I am the bread of life? No. Apart from Jesus. Which of them dare say, I am the Son of God? Because they are not. Which of them dare say, and the resurrection and the life. Oh. Because if you kill them, their blood is useless. Oh. They died, none of them ever resurrected. Yes. 
So in other words, it is an act of foolishness on many people's part to hear the declaration of Jesus and be comparing him as a religious leader. He is not a religious leader. This is God in the flesh. You can be putting, uh, uh, what's the name now? Gan, Gan, no, what's the name of this? One of the spiritual leaders from India. Huh? Gandhi. Gandhi. You can be putting Gandhi beside Jesus and say they are both spiritual leaders anyway. No. You can be putting all these so called religious leaders, you know, Buddha beside Jesus. Some worship moves, I mean, they worship uh, cows, mm -hmm. and they say that is their God. So you think cow is now your spiritual leader? Excuse me? Mm -hmm. The cow that you, if you kill that cow, I'm going to be happy. Uh, I'll just go buy some meat and cook it and fry it and roast it and enjoy it. And it's going to be really yummy. <laughs> like the kids will say. Praise God. It, it is an act of foolishness mm. to think Jesus is his religious leader and put him beside all this. And, and some came up and said that Jesus cannot be the only way to God. Please think. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except by me. Mm. Tell me another religious leader that has the right or the audacity to declare himself that way. No. Because they know their limits. They are spiritual leaders, agree? But they know their limits. When they get to a certain realm, they know where they can they should stop. Because they, they exceed that boundary, they are in trouble. Okay, I'm not against religious leaders, amen. I'm just <laughs> putting differences. Because Jesus is not a religious leader. He is God. Who live the express image of Christ, I mean of God here on earth. Are you still with me? In verse uh, verse 6 it says, but when he again brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all the angels of God do what? Worship, Worship him. Now, did you know, this is a mystery, but I, I, I believe you will understand as the Spirit of the Lord will also interpret it into, into your spirit. Did you know the day Jesus was born on earth was the first time the angels would see him? Okay, go back into the scriptures. Jesus was not Jesus when he was in heaven. He was the Word. Three that bears witness. God, the Word, and the Spirit. You find that, that in the New Testament also. God, the Word, and the Spirit. So the name of Jesus was not Jesus while he was in heaven. His name was the Word. Because you know where, you know why? That name Jesus cannot function back then because there was nobody to be saved in heaven. Nobody. <laughs> Amen. Amen. The name Jesus is what we need here. Mm -hmm. Because he has come to save you and I. Praise the Lord. Amen. So the day Jesus was born, all the angels gathered. What is happening? What is cooking in the bedroom of God? What is God doing? You know, the archangels has gone forth before and he has announced that a child will be born and upon his shoulder shall the government be. And he has declared all of that. He opened the eyes of Isaiah to see it many years ago. And when he now came to Mary, he began to declare. Yes. Amen. And the day Jesus was born physically, they were like, wow. So God could be this? Mm -hmm. My, my, oh my. Eight pounds? Whoa. And they bow. Because that's the first time ever that they will see God in the flesh. Mm -hmm. uh. If you know this Jesus, you will never, ever, ever be disappointed or derail 
different from the word of God. No matter what anybody says, regardless of the anointing they say they carry, I don't care, nobody carries anointing more than Jesus. Jesus himself is called the Christ, the anointed one. So it is out of what he's got, he distributed to all of us. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Let all the angels of God worship him. Verse 7, of the angels, he says, who makes his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. Amen. Amen. But to the son, he says, your throne, O God. Is forever and ever. A scepter of your righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. Now, let's back up a little. Verse 8 is a prophecy that came through David. You find that same scripture in the book of Psalms. Now, back to verse 7. It says, Who makes his angels what? Spirits. Spirit. And his ministers what? A flame of fire. Now, for many years, I've heard preachers use these scriptures and positioning themselves as ministers whom the Lord has made as flame of fire. And they use it to terrorize the people that follow them. They brag in it. They speak uh, uh, with pride. In that, if you do anything against the minister of God, who is the flame of fire, that means the fire from him is going to consume you. They use that concept, they go and tie it up with the uh, Old Testament scripture, whereby the prophet whom the children spoke against, calling him bald head man, who was angry, and call the animal and consume 40 children in a day. And this is the question I have. Is that the heartbeat of Christ? I said it years ago. Every preacher called by God serves at the pleasure of God. Now the question is, is it the pleasure of God for those children to be consumed by a deer? No. But in the Old Testament, they don't have that understanding. That is why every so-called minister of God must first of all deal with their anger issue. Deal with pride. Destroy every iota of pride. If not, under the anointing of God, you will do what you think it is right and it will be counted against you. Mm. People say all kinds of things. A lot of things happens in church. And as Christians, we follow, we listen to all kinds of preachers. Amen. You know, when, when some of us, and most of us here, we've heard a lot of preachers in the past. We've listened on TV. You know, we've sat under the same anointing and the grace that is upon their lives. You know, we've heard in fact there's no preacher but old and young, old as in in the late uh, 50s, 60s that I've not listened to or read their books you know, or get to know, you know, what the Lord is saying through them. But if as a Christian you don't have what is called spiritual seed to sieve the stuff that you're receiving, you, you will be taking all kinds of inside of your spirit and you will be compromised and become contaminated. Now, yes, God makes his angels spirits and he makes his ministers flame of fire. Do not forget the angels are also his ministers. Yes. You, we read it in, this, in that same scripture that uh, I think is in verse uh, towards uh,